Okay, so <clears throat> so we begin the Perikudalad on Shar Beis, and this is where he finally, this is 14th Perik, where he finally goes back to answer the question that he started off in, in Perik Aleph. Mm -hmm. right, what was the question in Perik Aleph? So the question was that in the second part, uh, chapter of Kriyashma, it says, That you have to serve Hashem with all your hearts and all mm -hmm. your nefesh. Right? And he said, that I understand that in the first chapter, it says you should love Hashem with all your heart and all your nefesh. That I understand. To love Hashem with all your heart. And your nefesh means even to give up your life. But to serve Hashem, which from where, from that phrase, to serve Hashem, we say that's service of Hashem means prayer. Right? What does it mean to serve Hashem with all your heart and all your soul? And again, heart we understand, Kavana. But soul, we don't understand. You have to give up your soul. That's not true. You don't have to give up your soul for prayer. So what does it mean to pray with, with, your, with your soul? So then he took a detour. A 13-chapter you know, detour. Into, into the whole idea of bracha. What does it mean when we dive into Hashem? What does it mean to who are we? You know, what does it mean we dive into Hashem? There is a world, there's a, there's a Shem, so to speak, that we have connection to. That's the Hashem that's, that chose to connect himself with the world, right? And our whole idea of prayer is really to strengthen the connection between the creation and the creator, right? And then he went into uh, food, they just like food connects the body and soul, because Borch and Avshia Hashem, it says, mm -hmm. right? There's a comparison the Gemara makes. Yeah. Between the the soul and the body is the is the sure, comparison so. to Hashem and, and 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 the world, so just like the f food connects mm -hmm. the body and soul, so to prayer in particular, but all really all mitzvahs in general, they're meant to be moisiv kedusha to increase Hashem's essence in the world, and so that's the purpose of prayer is to increase bracha, right? Bracha means to suffer to increase. Goodness, in order to to strengthen the the that that connection, that that uh, bond between Hashem and His creation, mm -hmm. right? And then he went into, um, and then he went into, um, and then he went into one second. Right then, he said a very interesting idea that every word really in the Prayer, so not only the idea of prayer creates the connection between Hashem and, and the world, but really every word by itself, there is the body of the word, and then there is the meaning or the soul of the word, right? And each word is really pregnant with layers and layers and layers of meaning. And every time a person utters a word, he reunites, kind of reconnects the physical world, the, the body of the word, with the, with the meaning of the word, so too that reconnects the, the physical creation or the creation in all of its forms with the Creator Hashem, right? So every word of prayer has layers of meaning, and then he talks about Anshik Nasa Gedoyla, how they mm -hmm. compose this prayer, which has every single prayer, that every, you know, three, three times a day throughout each person's life, for each individual who ever lived, every prayer is a unique creation and unique reconnection of this, of the creation and, and Hashem, Right? But then he came back, and that was that's what we did last time. And that's how you pointed out that really, like after all of those great, great yeah, ideas, yeah, you yeah. come back to the same idea that at the end of the day, the things that the thing that we're concerned yeah. about is the body of the prayer. Mm -hmm. There's so many layers, so to speak, of the to the soul of the prayer, that we are only connected to the body of the prayer. That is our our main way to pray, as he says, is to visualize each word. To appreciate mm -hmm. that each word has layers and layers of kedusha and meaning, and but all our our job is just to raise the, that word up to Shemaim and let it let Hashem take care of the impact that each word will will create, right? But we focus on the actual phys, visual and then mm -hmm. the pronunciation, pronunciation, the physical pronunciation of the word, and connect ourselves to that word in, as much as possible. Now that he got to that. Point. Now that he brought us to this point, that is, that every word is a body and soul, right? And then our job is to connect the body of the word. Now, and this is this is where I don't have it so clear why he, 
And he, now he's going to be able to answer the question, what, what does it mean to serve Hashem, to daven, to pray with all your soul? Now he's going to be able to answer that question. My only problem, as we'll see, is that did he really need that entire build until now, which is, I mean, it was a very beautiful 13 chapter detour, but it's, it sounded like there was no way to express the answer that he's about to express in this chapter without this whole 13 chapter development. And I'm not so convinced, and I'm not so sure. So let's see together if we could, if we agree with this, mm -hmm. with this phenomenon. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Parakudal it starts like this: Amnom, Berakosov. The the explanation of the pasuk betchilas devereinu in the beginning of our speaking, ula avdoi and to serve him, to serve Hashem, bechol nafshechem with all your soul. Mm -hmm. Right. Shavoides at fila hashuleima that the service of prayer which is complete. Has to be with the nefesh, with the soul. Who mm inyan -hmm. godol? This is a, a great thing. La yoydiim to those that know it, umevinim ktsas. They understand it a little bit. Because sher yasmi the odom tefilosa b'zoyisam adrego. When a person trains himself, yasmi he, he constantly trains mm -hmm. the, his prayer b'zoyisam adrego on this level. She is by our merits Hashem that we were about to lay out to explain. Then he will reach even a higher madrega to, to that that he described till now, meaning to, 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 to attach yourself to the body of the, to fill your mind up completely with the body of the word. Shouldn't say attach, attach is this next, next level. Mm -hmm. So, right, the, the madrega until now was fill your mind completely with the, with the words of prayer. Now he's actually going to talk about what I just kind of hinted to, is to attach yourself to the word as well. So kimatzinu. So let's see how it goes. Kimatzinu bekama mekoymes because we find in many places in Mikra in in the Torah, bedivrei Rabbi Seinu Zal and the words of our sages, shehatfila nikra b'shem nefesh. That the prayer is called by the name nefesh. So, mm -hmm. okay. So for example, kikama hilchasa givervase. There are many great halachos beikare hatfila. That we learn out, and in, in the essence of tefillah, iko lemashma mikro mikro That we learn from the pesukim of Chana, mm -hmm. right? Chana describes the tefillah of Chana when she prays for for her son, right? So there are all these pesukim, and the Gemara and Brachas learns various halachas from those pesukim. Uksiv bo, and then by by Chana it's written vo eshpoich es nafshi lefnei Hashem, and I poured forth my soul before Hashem, mm -hmm. right? And I poured forth my soul before Hashem. So till now we would understand that as just a poetic way of speaking. You know, she fervently prayed, so she poured out her soul. It's, it's poetry. Okay. Uksiv, in another place in Tehillim, it says, Borchi nafshi as Hashem, my soul blesses Hashem. Mm -hmm. Or, Halali nafshi as Hashem, my soul praises Hashem. Right? Mm -hmm. Furthermore, Rabbi Sinu Perakama de Brachis, so our, our sages and, and, and Brachis say this is in a, in a situation by nighttime prayer. Again, they mm -hmm. used to, this is practically speaking, this is a halachic situation where they used to daven, the shul used to be somewhere, you know, kind of somewhere on the outskirts of town, even in the center of town, but the, the rural areas where people lived very far away from shul. Mm -hmm. So they would go by Myers to shul, and then later they would have to walk home huh. mm -hmm. by themselves. Mm -hmm each one to their own abode. And sometimes it was dangerous to walk at night, right? So the Gemara is talking about a case where a guy came to shul at night and then there was a person davening with Kavana and he said, okay, you continue to daven and everybody left and they left this guy all alone to daven by himself. So he has to now leave shul and go home by himself. So, so the Gemara says in Brochus, two people that entered to daven Mm -hmm. And one of them finished early, mm -hmm. and he did not wait for his friend. Mm -hmm. And he left. So, the Gemara says very strong language that they rip up his prayer right in his face. Right? Uh -huh. Because it, as, as, as it says, Toyref he rips his nefesh with his anger. Right, mm -hmm. so the the posh again of the Gemara is that now that he left this guy praying, so if two things are happening, number one, he put him possibly in danger, but also he ruined his prayer because now he can't pray in peace because he's thinking about wait, how am I gonna, 
how am I gonna? Who's gonna close up? How am I gonna go home? Who's gonna take care of it? So he can't no, no longer concentrate mm -hmm. on his prayer. So because you caused his prayer to be ruined, so we, Hashem says your prayer is also ruined, right? So the Torah nafshe be'apoy. But so so the, that's the pasuk that we learn mm -hmm. it out from Torah mm -hmm. nafshe be'apoy in Perish Rashi. Rashi explains. Lecho Oimer, it says to you, Asher Goram to Lecho Litrev as Nafshecho Befanecho. You caused yourself to, 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 to have your Nefesh ripped off, ripped up in your face. Umahi Han Nefesh. And what is Nefesh? Mm -hmm. Zut Fila, that's prayer. Nefesh is, is, mm -hmm. is another word for prayer. Kamoy Shanemar Vosh Poiches Nefshi. Just like it says by Hannah, and she poured forth her soul. Okay, so here's a few references where. The word prayer and the word nefesh are either interchangeable or at the very least connected in some in some way. So what's pshat? Why why specifically nefesh? What's the connection between prayer and nefesh? And the matter is as follows. That prayer is really in 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 place of karbonas. Okay? Mm -hmm. So here, there's a long, lengthy hagov here, which we're going to skip for now. I want to just want to get the whole mm -hmm. flow mm -hmm. of the chapter. And just like the essence of the korban was to bring up the nefesh of the behema, mm -hmm. the lamaila, up mm -hmm. to to shemayim, right? So you, there's there's a kind of a. Um, there's kind of a gruesome pro process, meaning of, of, of shechting the behema and sending up the, the, the nefesh to Shemaim. But that was the, 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 the kapara, right? And so the essence of kapara was, was totally dependent on the, the many avoiders of the korban, but the main avoider was zrika sadam, sprinkling of the blood on the mizbeach, and the mm -hmm. dam is the nefesh, mm -hmm. right? So v'chein aktaros ayemurim, and really also the, the burning on the altar of all of the limbs, yikoram hoyo lechavona soyo nefesh was also really the kavona was to again to raise up the nefesh of the behemoth to shemay. Okay, so similarly, ikar enyan hatfila hu. So similarly, the main part of the tfila is lehalois to raise up v'limsor and to give over uledabek and to attach. Nafshar Lamala to attach one's nefesh up above. Mm -hmm. Okay? So again, so just like a carbon, the main part of the carbon is to guess to bring it up to Shamaim. So too the main tfila, which is which is a substitute as we will seek mm -hmm. for carbon, but but which is but it's built on the map of what a carbon is, is to raise up one's nefesh to Shamaim. Okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, because first of all, he says that the, the, the ability to speak for a person is called nefesh. Right? Mm -hmm. That's like it's written in the Pasuk. When a person was created, right, he mm -hmm. became a speaking spirit. The nefesh chayo, vitirgem onkulus, onkulus translates that l'ruach a speaking spirit. So nefesh chayo, a living soul, is translated as speaking spirit. So we see the word nefesh mm -hmm. is connected to the ability to speak. So when a person speaks, he kind of raises his nefesh up to Shemayim. A person should really look into the fact that every word that a person comes that comes out of a person's mouth, really there is air, there's, right, hevel alev, there's, there's air of, from the heart, kind of the, mm -hmm. from within, there is air coming out from within, outside. That's the speaking spirit. And really, this, our uh, speech is our expression of our in, insights, right? When we speak, we express our ideas, we expe express our nefesh. And that is really the the main difference between an odom and a, a behema is the ability to speak. Language is a human institution, right? Behema does not have language. Mm -hmm. therefore, call Therefore, every word that comes up from the mouth of a person, he koyach It's it's a part. It's a part and parcel of his nefesh. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue. 
So lechein lezois. Therefore, beis omdoy lehis palo lefnei koinai. Therefore, at the moment that he stands up to daven before his Creator, he's Baruch Shmoy. Yafshid gufei me al nafshu. A person has to completely remove the body from his soul. Mm-hmm. He has to remove. He has to. He becomes the korban, so to speak. So he removes the body from his soul. Hainu, what does that mean? He has to completely, completely remove all of the thoughts that come from the powers of the body. Meaning anything that's connected to the body, any kind of, um, any kind of um, uh, concerns, bodily concerns should be completely removed from the person. And that they they should um, the the those those concerns of the body that are connected connected to his soul they should not be connected. That his service of prayer should be only nefesh like, right? Mm-hmm. And completely be attached to reusa ilo to his to his upper rotsen. Reusa means rotsen to his upper will, right? Mm-hmm. Vahu, then we're gonna, let's, we'll, we'll read and we'll speak it out a little more. Vahu shekoidam on the betfila, which means also that before a person stands up to pray, tzorich levatel, he needs to an, uh, annul, ula hosir, and to remove me'ola from him, b'machshavtoi, with his thought, kol tanuge haguf, any pleasures, any bodily pleasures, v'hana oisav, and pleasures, v'chol inyonov, and any concerns, at sheyukba b'machshavtoi limois haguf. To such a degree that he sh- it should be in his body to almost be disgusted by the body. Ki ilu ena balaguf klal. He should not be a person of body at all. Verak nafshoi levadoi he hamidaberest filosai. And only his soul should speak the words of prayer. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. So we're talking about, I mean, a whole, this is like Jewish med- meditation, you could say one on one. It's it's a whole different. It's a whole different ex- experience of prayer that I don't know, you know, who prays like this. But, but the idea here is that even before a person utters any words of prayer, he has to first sit there and completely detach himself, completely be in that whatever called that Zen, whatever Buddhist word you want to use. I don't know, Nirvana, Nirvana. I don't know. But I'm saying the person has to be completely. Different absorbed dimension. in his mind, completely absorbed in his mind that he's not connected to his body at all. Right? Ubedabroi, let's continue. Ubedabroi called Teva. So then, when he speaks every word, mm-hmm. right? That then each word becomes a, a, a really a, a chalak of his soul. Yad He has to attach his will to every word very much. Litain to give Lishbachbo Nafsho Mamash Legamri to really pour forth his soul completely. Ulehad Biko and to attach her, the soul, Bashoy Risha Elyoin to the upper root shall teva satfila of the words of prayer, Oimdim Ruma Shlom Shal Oilam, which really stand at the heights of the world. Okay, Kumashna Kosov Bizoyhar Vayakil, just like it's written in the Zoyhar and Parsh Vayakil and Iskriba Go. Which we skipped in the Hagah. Ubuoid the the pume usvose merachashin that as lo, as 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 his mouth and his lips are moving, right? Libe yechavein reuse. His heart should be concentrating on his will. Yestalek leela leela should go go up higher and higher. Leyach to kulo beroza de rosen that to unite everything. In secrets of secrets, the tamon takiyu kol ruusin. That over there, our 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 takiyu means like they're um, what's the word set? They're they're implanted. All of the all of the different wills umachshavt in brozo the kaima bein sof and connected to actually in the infinite the, of Creator. Again, we're not sure exactly what everything here means, but again, the idea that he wants over here is that, is that, is that with every word, which is an is an expression of our soul, it connects to some, some, high madrega up to Hashem, meaning it attaches itself to Hashem. 
Ve'oz, when he's on this madrega, Yechoshev, he should really think, he would, he would, he would contemplate, Kihilu mesulak mizeha oilam, that he's truly removed from this world. Ve'hu mi b'neha aliyah lemayla, and he belongs to the, what's called the b'neha aliyah, the, the people of the attic. Over here could be me, meaning even Malachim, Lamaila, mm-hmm. up above. Atchigam Acharat Fila to such a degree that even after prayer, Yikshalam Oid, it should be very difficult for him le half nice machshavtai to to bring back his thought, Leinyonizah Oilam, to the concerns of this world. Right? Mm-hmm. If he since he gets to such a meditative state where he's completely attached to the spiritual that when he's done praying and he wants to come come back, it should be even difficult yeah. for him to to return back to the physical reality. And he should feel afterwards that as if he was like dropped down from some high roof to some deep pit. Okay, Inyan, as we see, he says, Chasidim and Rishonim, Right, so we were talking about this Vasik in the Chidim Rishonim. It says the Gemara says, "Shoh you show him." They used to wait. Show aches gam acher at fila. The Gemara says they used to wait an hour before prayer to get themselves worked yeah. up to that level where they can pray on this madrega. Then they would daven for one hour, and then they would have to have another hour to come down after the prayer. So it doesn't say to come down, but that's what he, he so he's saying. It must be what it is because. What are they doing for a whole hour after mm-hmm. the prayer? They need to, to de whatever it is, de decompress. Right, decompress. Right. And so that's and that's what Arizal writes on this. In order to what he calls to to retain those moichin. Moichin means mold. Mm-hmm. Mold. Right. In order to what he calls to to retain those moichin. Moichin means brains, meaning those minds. Right. And this is. All included in that statement that he brought already a few times. A mispalel, if so, somebody who prays tzorich shigitin liboy lemaala, he has to give his heart up high. He has to t- give his heart up high, right? So that's that's all included in that idea. Mm-hmm. Okay, the kol kach, again the kol kach, and so much tirbe. He should he should he should increase with the slahate and should ignite uh also his love is for for Hashem with his this the power of his soul that he should really desire in truth that as he's speaking now this holy words shall teva from whatever word of tfila minusa tfila that his nefer should really, he wants his body, to, his sorry, he wants his soul to actually attach itself to the word of prayer and completely leave, leave his body. He's ready to go and meet his maker with each and every word of prayer. And he, because so much is filled with the love for Hashem to such a degree that he was ready to, to, find, to attach himself completely to Hashem at that, at that point. Okay, Khan, this is what the Pasuk means to say, Ula Avdoy and to serve Bechol Nafshechem with all your soul. Yeah. Right? That completely, completely with the word. So it really comes out to be very literal, right? What he wants to say is you take it very literally, what it says with all your soul to give up your life. It means to attach yourself so completely to the words of prayer. That with every word of prayer, your soul is so invested and attached to the prayer that it's completely kind of leaving your body and, and clinging up to, 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 to Hashem. Okay? Uh, and that's what the Pasuk means. And I poured forth my soul before Hashem. So it's more than just poetry. It's, it's, it's an actual precise description of the process that's going on. And it's clear. So we have this last paragraph. And so too, we can explain what it says in the Gemara. The Gemara in says, A person's prayer is not heard. Unless he places his soul, literal translation means 
kaf is 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 the palm. Mm -hmm. He has to place his nefesh, his soul, into his into the, his palm. What does that mean? So he has a different touch. Completely raise up and attach with his prayer, his soul up above. But kapoy, so over here he wants to say kapoy doesn't really mean palm. Perush shorshoy. It also has a meaning of root. Miloshin mm vechiposoy -hmm. loiranon. It brings a posse from Eev that over here it has a sense of, of, of a root. That the the chiposel or no, the root it wasn't vibrant. I'm not sure what he's mm -hmm. talking about over there, but the point is that um, that a person has to mesim nafshe bekapoy means attach attach your soul to your root. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's the end of the main part of the chapter. That's the whole chapter. So that answers the question. So again, so he, the question was, what does it mean to to pray with all your soul? Right? Does it mean to give up your life? The answer is no, it doesn't mean to give up your life, but it means to pray with such fervor, with such attachment, that it is as if your nefesh is really leaving your body at that moment, or you want it to, to leave your body. So it's very literal. Pray with your soul means attach your 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 to come to touch such such a madrega that you completely attach to the words of prayer that your whole nefesh is is really coming out and you're detached completely mm -hmm. from the body. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right, so it's so it's I mean, it's a very beautiful, incredibly beautiful idea. I mean, again, so my, my question only remains, I'm not very clear as to did he really need the whole build until now to answer this question. Could he have answered it back in, in chapter 2? So you, you know, ch chapter, could, could chapter 14 be in chapter 2? Did he need the whole idea of bracha, that it's Think attachment so. of I mean, Hashem? How else he gonna t he's assuming that he's going to tell you how to attach your, your your whole nafshahem to the to the source. Now you understand how what a bracha means. Now you understand why you're davening, why you're davening, how you're davening. It's an illustration of how, you told why you should do it. Okay, now I understand why we should do it. Now all this the the, the preamble of these thirteen chapters were explaining us how we should do it. I don't know. I don't. So, I don't. So, you, you know, know it's it, not. A, you know, it's like I like really, to really, think that he's really very multi, mathematical. Really you know what really I mean? Really I like the multiple to... choice answers, and then you read the question. So you know, now, uh, you know what I mean. So this is how you should dive in. Excellent. Now, now I should dive in. and this is why you should dive in. Right, I'm not. Just, I'm I mean, not it could have, could have, could, could have been. The I'm not other convinced that he need the whole idea of bracha of Hashem says chabras to the world and the nechila and that whole build of of. It was definitely beneficial. Oh no question, no. He brought, it was very good. I mean, could he have uh, done this? He, could, in the, in the, could he have told us this in the first chapter without all the other thirteen? Probably. I mean, I don't know. Not probably. I can't say probably. He wrote the book. No, so my 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 hunch is that he's being very mathematical over here. I don't think he he wants to d make tangents, even though he might have an agenda, as we've mentioned a few times. He might have ideas that he wants to bring out, but I think he would only bring them out if it actually is necessary for the entire build. I don't think he wants to have a, four, a thirteen chapter digression right. just to give you a full picture of what prayer is. So, so obviously, feels no. that your understanding of what the full prayer is 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 necessary for you to right. really. Right, so I'm not kind of, uh, right, so I'm trying the to weight understand. Of the I'm trying to understand on how you know how necessary is it, just to fill in, you know, to fill in nicely the whole picture, or is it? Really, without that, I wouldn't be able to appreciate who, his who, answer. Who, who's, who's the audience? Because it was definitely beneficial to me. It opened up a lot of... Right. Uh, and again, I'm not saying that there's no benefit, but I feel like his, his, the, his style is, even though it may not appear mathematical, as if he is taking tangents and, 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 and um, diversions, but I think everything is pure, logical, step-by-step -step thing. I just don't know what that is. I, not like I don't have it. Okay. Anyways, but that's that's where we stand. Okay. So he just gave us the answer to that original question. What he's gonna do now in the next few chapters is gonna take it to the next level. Okay. So we just did chapter fourteen. Now we have a, two big hagos over here, which 
which really bring out the point even fuller. But then, and then we have three chapters left. No, four chapters left. Four chapters left to, to the end of this gate. Mm -hmm. In the next four chapters, he's going to take that idea, Bechol Nafshechem, and really delve even deeper. If you think that there's, this is the highest Madriga, he's going to take it even, even higher. Uh -huh. He's going to even take it even higher, okay? So, but let's, so let's first, um, let's try to fill some of these, uh, put some more meat mm -hmm. on this, on this idea. Okay, so the first Hago zeroes in on his comparison. Mm -hmm. well, okay, so we might, doesn't look like we're going to finish it today. Okay, mm -hmm. but his first Hago zeroes in on the comparison between prayer and carbonus. Okay, all right, so let's see. Hago, so shall yideha carbonus should be migdash. Right, so he said before that prayer is a substitute, is where it was mis was misukin was was niskin mm -hmm. in such a way that it follows the same framework as carbonus. Shall yidei carbonus should be mikdash through carbonus should be mikdash shohoyo kule bedugde malyoinup and we he's reminding us that the base of mikdash was really if you remember from the first gate from the first shah was that that the base of mikdash was as also a model of the of the whole creation, mm -hmm. right? Man was a model of creation. Universe was a model. Was it was the creation, and Beis Hamikdash was the model of creation too. And everything was really Telamelukim, right? So, so it was kula bedugma It was it was it was in the mold of above. Aliyos of its its attics, v'chadorav and its rooms, chambers, v'chol kelev and all the vessels in the Beis Hamikdash, asher yishor subahem, which was used to serve Hashem. So all of them was. Had everything it was had a symbolic nature. So now the carbonus in that macrocosm or microcosm that's the base of English show you miskashrim or misyachadim al yedehim ha oilomois va koichis al yoinim. That via the carbonus, uh, the, the coin and his service in the, the base of English united all of the forces and all of the worlds in the, in the creation. Vahanehoirin shalai cholis akadosh, and all the lights of the different chambers. Up spiritual chambers that we know nothing about. Anyways, kulam v'seder madregas le'elo leida ad ein soif. All the different layers, all the way up to Hashem, the infinite ein soif. Kamuvur b'mukoy mesrabas in bezoyhar. As it, he's going to list twenty-five different places where this idea is expressed that the service of the purpose of the karbonus, as he's going to say in a minute, even the word karban, right? That's why sacrifice. Is not a good translation of the word karban. But karban comes from the karev, which means to bring close. So it brought us, the physical entities, closer to Hashem. But it really had another layer that it brought all of the forces of creation together into a more perfect union, right? Velechein. That's what he's saying. Velechein nikra karban. That's why it's called a karban. Like it says in, 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 the, in another Kabbalistic Sefer Medrash called Bahir, mm -hmm. Amai Ikri Korban, why is it called a Korban? Ela al Shem Shemekarev Hatsuroi Sakadoshes, because it brings close the different holy forms, again, whatever that means. Vo'omru, and they also said, right, by Karbonos it says, Lereach Nechoyach, to the sweet, pleasing aroma, mm -hmm. right? Haruach Yoyred, so Reach comes, is related to the word Ruach. The Ruach, the spirit, Yoyred comes down. And is is united with these various holy forms. And it's brought close via the korban. That's why it's called the korban. That's the end of that medrash, right? And he brings the same similar idea from Zoyar. Beiskiriyas korban. It's called the korban. Al shem diskirivubo because many many are brought close with it mm -hmm. okay so so far he's basically gave us in these two paragraphs two ideas one idea is that it was happening in the mikdash and the mikdash is a as a microcosm of the entire creation spiritual and physical the whole creation is the base of mikdash and inside that base of mikdash there is a carbon that basically unifies all of the various forces of the base of mikdash mm -hmm. symbolically unifying all of the various forces that are in creation on the ace and from the time and from the time that the, via our sins, the service of the Beis Hamikdash was was uh, ceased to exist. 
So our our prayer service replaces it. So we are, or each one of us are, is is kind of a coin godel every day within our little realm that Hashem gave us. This is your base amigdash. This is your world. This is your part of creation, and we are the kahanim in that in that creation. And our carbonus that we bring is the words of prayer. And so shigam hisaguloso, and so the purpose of prayer also is what lekasher uliyached ha'olamis to bond, to bind, and to unite, unify the worlds ad leila leila beinsof until they're all attached mm-hmm. to Hashem. Kamavur b'mekoy misrabes bezayar, and this is explained in many places in the Zohar. And he's going to list now. So I, we're going to have to stop here. But I'm just... See, so this I understand. You see, this is not... I'm not sure if I see this connection. This I understand. The, the idea of prayer as the tool, as the, the, the process through which a person is able to unify the various elements of creation, that fits. I see why that fits with the whole build that he built until now, which is where he said... The whole idea of bracha is unifying Hakadosh Baruch Hu in His creation, right? The whole idea of tefillah is this, but is that the same thing as pouring forth one's soul? Is that how how is that connected? Specifically, that aspect of it. How is that connected to unifying the creation? That I just don't. There must be something missing. There's something missing. I understand that. It's me attaching myself to Akash Baruch I understand that. But is that... And then this, how do you define uni- unifying the creation? This so till now, unifying. again, he was speaking that every word is a body and soul. Anytime right. I connect the body and soul, I'm unifying creation. But over here, yeah. in the Bechol Nafshech, it really comes down, I'm, I'm detaching body exactly. and soul. I'm, I'm, I'm sending my soul up to Shemaim. And he says that's like a korban. Again, the idea of a korban he mentioned is also to send up the nefesh of the korban to Shemaim. I get it. And the korban also united the world. So there's a link here that's 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 missing to me. I don't know. To my mind, there's a link here that's that's missing. I've been, been thinking about it the whole day. And so this is you nullif- yeah, but by, by burning the korban, you're nullifying the physical aspect of it. You're destroying the physical. You're leaving only the pleasant aroma, whatever the spiritual concept right. of it. The same thing is by coming out of your physical body by meditating and dedicating yourself to the to feel you you trying to remove nullifying the, the the physical aspect but you can't completely delete it you can't completely cancel the same way there's going to be ashes remaining after the gorman your body is still going to remain right but you 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 taking everything that you've got and you you turn it into you know the other realm the other universe, the other dimension as much as you can. Something's missing to me. I'm not hearing it. I think I'm starting to get it now actually. Because when I think I'm thinking so there's different kinds of unifying. There's unifying right, there's unifying, let's say I have different pieces of instruments playing their own thing, but they're coming together as a symphony. Now they unify that's the one unit. That's one kind of unifying. That's not the kind of unifying he's mm. talking about kind of unifying he's talking about is the way he was talking about until now, that there is a Kosh Baruch in his creation. And if there's any imperfection in the creation, it's only because the creation is distant from a Kosh Baruch right? And the purpose of pride, and that, I mean, that's what you were saying, and the purpose of prayer, as well as the Korban, is to unify the creation with the Creator, in other words, Korban, bring it closer mm-hmm. to the source, bring it closer to the source of the creation, and as such, you remove the distance, and therefore you remove all of the imperfections mm-hmm. that are within the creation. So therefore, so there, that's the unity of Korban, and that's the unity of prayer. So therefore, when a person prays Bechol Nafshoi, with all of his soul, what he's doing is he is attaching himself closer to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, and with himself he is attaching the creation closer to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, and therefore, which is what prayer is, which is removal of distance. Mm-hmm. With the removal of distance, you get all of those things. You ask for a fool, you ask for parnasa, you mm-hmm. ask for all of these 
quote unquote physical things, but in reality is what you're asking for is attachment to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which as a result will remove all of the imperfections within the, within the creation. And that's and that's the unity and, that, and, and, of the, and that's why he needed the built that therefore until need, now exactly that that's why you need to know why you should be asking what it is that you what you mean by asking right that's what, right exactly right so you needed to that whole build that you're asking for the bracha of, 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 of from above yeah, but he's exactly. going to show now that that right so the difference they're different right we mentioned already a few times there's a difference of Shafa coming down from above to below and then there is a there is a difference of attaching from below to above. So he's going to show that prayer is mainly our ability to attach from below to above because we are going up. So we are attaching from below to 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 above. Right, of course, because we we this we try to right. perfect we're, us. We're climbing up the la yeah. ladder, not the other way around. Yeah. Hashem is kind of coming right. we, down we the ladder to us. Okay, so again, we'll I, I want to. I have to contemplate this a little more, but I think that we're on the right track now.